Mark Cavendish blows up at X Quick Stepper Richese for this move in a sprint in Tour of Oman Stage 5. Was it justified? We'll get into that. I've got the overhead shot, which we didn't see initially. A tricky little stage for the sprint teams to control. I mean, there's Gaviria here, there's Caden Groves wanting to get a win on the board for Bike Exchange. Gaviria's won a stage, Cavendish has looked the fastest, but lead out's been an issue. And similarly, for Intermarche wanting Gobert Materio, Tom de Vrent looking like a rock star, they want to defend Jan Hurt's GC lead after Green Mountain the other day. And it, it's going to be difficult. They have, they have probably the strongest all-around team, but there's hills close to the finish. There's a 1K 9% climb, a breakaway formed with the teams we've seen in the break all throughout the Tour of Oman, Burgos, Uskatel, Bingoal, Astana Dev team, and today actually one of the Oman national team guys, which is good to see. But this was a bit of a leg breaker climb, actually a beautiful climb, which started to break up the breakaway. Watch out for this guy on the Astana Dev team, young Ecuadorian Harold Lopez. Looks pretty good. But for Quick Step, it was a bit of a nightmare because DSM and Arkea Semzik don't have a sprinter here, and they also don't have anyone on the podium on GC, so they use this hill to attack. You have Volklin, 20-year-old or 21-year-old French guy in Arkea. Watch out for this guy. He looks pretty good. The lot in the hilly stages and the mountain stages, he's looked good. Luckily for Quick Step, Intermarche took control, not wanting to leave anything to chance for Jan Hert in the leader's jersey, who, by the way, just went full gas on Green Mountain yesterday. Incredible performance. But it wasn't just Intermarche pacing. DSM started to pace at the front of the peloton, trying to break up this group, despite their rider in the breakaway, trying to gain some time himself. Been a bit of a learning experience, I think, at Tour of Oman for some of the youngsters on DSM. Haven't got it right all week, particularly on the Masnada stage win, but here it kind of makes sense. They're trying to make the race hard. They don't have a sprinter. They've got SKA. They've got Van Danabeel. They want to put Quick Step under pressure. Strakov for Gazprom. He attacked. Now, this guy... He's done well in Asturias from 17 to 19. And Velto Asturias, literally the highest level one week race, four day race in the 17 to 19 period. That, that, during that period, better than Paranese, etc. Raul Alarcon Goat ended Quintana's career there. But Quick Step started to pace finally. The problem for them was there were these little nasty climbs close to the finish. They do another rep after this. And they want to control this Strakov move and the Uskatel move. And they did so well on the flat. But they don't want to pace the climb too hard because that puts Cavendish under pressure. And Arkea again, sensing, okay, quick step, trying to block this, do it steady. They started to pace, marked by Masnada in the green jersey, second wheel, doing a job for Cavendish. UAE not doing too much, preserving their lead out for Fernando Gaviria, which was interesting. The quick step were really the team responsible. Maybe it's because Masnada was second on GC. I'm not sure. Finally, Søren Kral Andersen, similar to his move on stage 14 of the Tour de France 2020, we haven't seen him in that condition since, attacked just before the crest of the final climb on a late flyer, deep into the last kilometer, which would be near the coast. Actually quite an attractive stage venue, this one. But he got mowed down by the track background focused squad of Bike Exchange. Jayco going for Caden Groves, and maybe this Move from Søren Kral Andersen left them one man short and just made 25, 35 meters difference for Groves at the end, which we'll see. Into the last K, again, the quick step lead out, not ideal. Cavendish, clearly the fastest man at Tour of Oman. He looks, frankly, faster than last year in terms of top end speed and acceleration. The lead out's not been great. Uh, and that's not the guy's fault here either. That's not really, they're not the top lead out guys. Teams are really struggling to put squads together at the moment. And Stan van Trich is a neo pro, Masnada's going for GC, etc. But Cavendish, he's once again left his lead out. He's just dropped himself onto Gaviria's wheel. Rochese Gaviria has been the best combo at Tour of Oman. Groves is second wheel, or third wheel rather, for bike exchange. And UAE's been able to pre preserve Rochese deep into this last kilometer, in fact. He's still sitting in the wheel and doesn't move off Groves with about 150 meters to go. This is 200 to go, and Groves opens up off his lead-out man with Rochese on his wheel. Rochese, I think, was just about to kick on the left or right-hand side of Groves, but Groves jumps earlier, and so Rochese just follows his draft. Now we're into 150. Rochese goes one way to our left as we look at it. Gaviria goes the long way around to the right. Cavendish is on Gaviria's wheel, deeper fourth wheel, with Groves in the middle. And Cavendish gets blocked. Gaviria, smooth as you like, wins another stage of Tour of Oman.
best lead out this week with Rochesa and they get the job done again. But he is a lot of hooting and hollering back behind him. He's like, what is going on back down there? And the answer was, here's the overhead shot. Max Rochese got relegated for what he's about to do off Caden Grove's wheel here. He goes to the right. He's a, okay, he's a lead out man. He's, I know people say lead out men aren't humans too. They're humans. They're allowed to go for their own sprint as well. Gaviri goes left and Cav switches off ducking into the right. He thinks the space is on the right. He thinks Rochese is not going to sprint. But Rochese jumps into that gap first. And then, yes, there is a slight move to the right, but Groves moves to the right as well. And so when we slow it down, we see that Rochese goes to the right. You can say, okay, on the strictest interpretation of the rules where you can't deviate from your lane, he's launched his sprint here, to, and he's now to the right of Groves. And there is a little bit of space for Cavendish on the right-hand side. But Groves moves over a little bit further to the right, and now Rich and Rochese then moves a, a small amount to the right as well, and Cavendish puts the anchors on here. And when you play it forward a little bit more, you see the gap between Rochese and Groves, and then Gaviria to the left, it's about an equal gap. Like, you can't say that Gaviria has to sprint two centimeters next to Groves, rubbing elbows to his left. And I know that in the past, I've been the one to say, okay, this rider blew a gust of wind at that rider, they should be relegated with a qualified, etc. But if this is the standard for deviating from your lane, almost imperceptible around a right-hand bend by Rochese, then we're gonna see relegations every single sprint, including intermediate sprints this year. This one from Mercu, unpunished in the Tour de France. Like, I, I thought from the front on, Rochese had done that, had swept across. And then stage six of the tour, this one was bad from Quickstep and Merku too. He fully closed Sagan to the barriers. The Rochese one is not on any sort of scale like this. And just because this got unpunished doesn't mean that the Rochese one is okay. But I'm saying, based on that overhead, that is a very, very strict standard to apply. And I don't expect it to be applied as strictly throughout this year. But for UAE, they don't care. And that's the thing, there wasn't really any negative for Gaviria. He still wins the stage. His lead up man gets relegated or disqualified, whatever. Groves, Capio, Pinot, Rochese, Page, Cavanich rounding up the top seven. But it's the last stage, he gets relegated. His sprinter still wins. What's the punishment? for Gaviria. In terms of GC, Jan Hurt takes it out. A huge win for Intermarche. There's not a second Kosha, third, and Taramay, eighth. 250 UCI points for Intermarche at Tour of Oman GC. Thanks for coming. It's a nice feeling. I mean, Thank you very much. like I told already many times, I didn't win the race long time. Also, I didn't win the stage a long time, and now also GC. So, so yeah, I feel really good, but like I told many times, uh, without team would be impossible. So I have to thank Thanks to all team members because it's victory of everybody. But I hope you enjoyed the Tour of Oman highlights. I have Andalusia rights starting tomorrow. Algarve, I don't have. You'll have to check out the Lantern Rouge cycling podcast. We'll have daily stage recaps there for the Portuguese race with Remco and Co.